If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out the full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. That's DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. Hello, Northlanders. It's Monday, June 19th. I'm White Buckner with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. Community members gathered around the Central Hillside Community Center and Park Sunday afternoon for the 49th annual NAACP Duluth Branch Juneteenth celebration. Cool weather didn't slow down the celebration of food, family, and fun. Juneteenth, Commemorated annually June 19th is the anniversary of the day when United States Army officers informed enslaved black people in Glaveston, Texas, that slavery was over a full two years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. In February, Minnesota became the 26th state to recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday. It has been recognized as a federal holiday since 2021. The celebration included music from a DJ and a live performance from the World Beat Drummers, a drum group from Myers-Wilkins Elementary School. Students there learn and create music in the drumming tradition of Western Africa and perform at events around the region. Attendees could also grab a bite from food vendors, get a free haircut and nail appointment, and take photos with friends in a photo booth. Several local nonprofit organizations provided info and games along East 4th Street, and several black-owned businesses were featured as well. A federal judge is ordering a Canadian energy firm to pay $5.1 million for trespassing on a northern Wisconsin tribe's reservation and remove its oil and gas pipeline from lands it's illegally operating on within three years. The decision comes nearly four years after the Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa filed a federal lawsuit against Enbridge Incorporated to shut down and remove its Line 5 pipeline from the reservation. The company's easements on a dozen parcels of land expired in 2013, and the tribe refused to renew them. Last fall, U.S. District Judge William Conley ruled Enbridge has been trespassing on the Bad River Reservation, entitling the tribe to financial remedy. The nearly 70-year-old Line 5 carries up to 23 million gallons of light crude oil and natural gas liquids each day, over a 645-mile span from Superior across northern Wisconsin and Michigan to Sarnia, Ontario. The tribe sued Enbridge over fears that erosion could threaten to expose and rupture the pipeline, and concerns over the line's safety have only heightened in recent weeks as spring flooding increased erosion on the Bad River's banks near Line 5. The pipeline is now only 11 feet from the river at an area known as the Meander. In an order issued Friday, Conley said a rupture of the pipeline at the Meander is a public nuisance and that current conditions create an unreasonable risk of failure. However, he said the threat of rupture is not imminent enough to require an immediate shutdown. Conley ordered Enbridge to adopt its plan with minor changes within 21 days that would require preparation to purge the pipeline of product if two markers within 10 feet of the Line 5 are lost due to erosion. The pipeline would be purged and shut down if a 60-foot span of pipe became unsupported. The company would also have to pay a portion of its profits to the tribe for as long as the pipeline continues to operate in trespass. An Enbridge spokesperson said the company is considering its options, which includes seeking to place a hold on the judge's ruling pending its appeal. Heat and humidity, not air quality, proved to be the biggest challenge for runners Saturday who took part in the 47th running of Grandma's Marathon and the 33rd running of the Gary Bjorkland Half Marathon. Dr. Kathleen McLeland, medical director of Grandma's Marathon, said the finish line medical tent in Canal Park treated around 200 race participants Saturday, with eight from across the course being sent to the hospital for further treatment. Both of those numbers are average, McLeland said. There were 14,166 finishers between the full and half marathon this year. The most common issue for runners seeking treatment was heat-related illness, as Saturday was warmer than recent years on race day. The day started with temperatures in the low 50s in the early morning before reaching the low 70s in the afternoon. Humidity was around 80%, according to the National Weather Service in Duluth. Grandma's Marathon worked with the National Weather Service in Duluth this week to monitor the air quality after smoke from wildfires in Canada blanketed Duluth and the North Shore on Wednesday. McLeland said air quality Saturday was considered moderate compared to Wednesday when it was severe with a high risk of illness. McLeland said there are not a lot of air quality guidelines for endurance races like marathons. 
The NCAA was one of the few organizations with guidelines for physical activity relating to air quality, and that's what Grandma's Marathon used this week as a reference should action be required. The 6,683 finishers of the marathon were the most since 2016, while the 7,483 finishers of the Gary Bjorklund Half Marathon were 400 shy of the all-time record set in 2016. There were 9,230 registered for the Half Marathon this year, and 8,961 registered for the Full Marathon. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought to you by Superior Telegram's history podcast, Archive Dive. Good morning, this forecast for your Monday and Juneteenth around the Duluth area. Clouds this morning will give way to a mostly sunny sky during the day. High temperature in the lower 70s with an east wind around 5 to 10 miles an hour. Might be a couple degrees warmer in northern Wisconsin. For tonight, mostly clear and mild with temperatures dropping into the mid-50s. 5 to 15 winds out of the east. And then for Tuesday, sunny and warmer with temperatures reaching around 81 and as warm as the mid to upper 80s in northern Wisconsin. Sunny and warm again on Wednesday. Some showers possible later in the week. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to Archive Dive for their support. The monthly history podcast, hosted by Superior Telegram reporter Maria Lockwood, dips in the archives of historic events, people, and places around Superior and Douglas County. You can find the latest episode of Archive Dive at superiortelegram.com or wherever you also get this podcast. Reporting for today's episode was done by Terry Cato, Danielle Kading, Matt Wellens, and Jamie Malcolm. Thank you for listening to the Luth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.